Hi everyone, Joshua Hanlon here, and I'm at the Brickmania headquarters in Minneapolis, and I'm joined by Dan Siskin, and he's gonna show us all around, kind of behind the scenes of the Brickmania operations here. Sure, well right now you're in the office portion. This is actually the design room. So we have several several areas of our, of our, of our operation. This is sort of where the magic starts. So um, Andrew Summers here is, is, is designing a new, a new kit, which of course by the time this comes out, it may not be new. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So I think there'll be, what, an in-depth interview with one, one or more of the designers? Yes, for sure. So, so we'll get a little more yeah. behind the scenes of how the designers operate right. in that video. So what you're seeing is he's building an, a, a new kit that's going to be available in the future uh, from Brickmania. And actually over on this, this, this area right here, we actually have these cases hold the new kits. This, the first one here, these are actually older Brickmania kits getting revamped for a new instruction book coming out. And the next, next kit are some of the Pre preview of some of the kits that are actually in the works. This is just a piece. This is just a piece of them. So the designers are actually working on stuff, and, and we do extensive product testing. So before it actually even hits the customer, it'll be built several times, rebuilt, torn apart. You know, corrections made when necessary, uh, instructions tested. Um, you know, this this plane here is missing its its insignias on the wings, so it's it, it, those will eventually be the gray the gray tiles will be eventually replaced by the proper colors. Um, it's kind of the way things we, we operate around here. There's a lot going on. Let me point this, this little guy out here. I was just going to mention that because I love that. <laughs> this is a, a tiny little, the blacksmith shop, which of course I think has uh, a lot of notoriety just being the first Lego fan created sets. I made a little miniature one. So we're at, actually at the 20th anniversary of my original release of this, this blacksmith shop. Wow. Of the first Brick Mania kit, in fact. Um, so we're going to release this little guy as a, a 20 year anniversary. So you're looking at a sneak peek of it. I think you could actually download instructions already from the, rush, the, the dark web. <laughs> <laughs> so for people who remember maybe the original kit or have seen that before, you can get the little micro. Yeah, we're just going to put out a few of these. It's, it's going to be a really limited edition, just like the, the original. So limited edition uh, bricksmith shop. <laughs> so uh, in commemoration of my first set. Yeah. So and of course, here's Cody. Our chief designer. He's, of course. of course, you can't have a, you can't you can't go to the Brick Mania design team without. He's actually never there. allowed to leave his desk during the day, and he works there nonstop. He, he sneaks out once in a while. Yeah, chain under my desk. yeah. <laughs> she's, a, she's a shot caller. <laughs> so this is typically where you'll find Cody uh, when we're not interrupting him. <laughs> so working on what are you working on now? I'm currently working on the SB two C. So SB2C Helldiver, um, a, a big carrier-based dive bomber from uh, World War II. So it's, it, yeah, pieces, it, it, it looks, it's a little, it, he's working on instruction, so it's all taken apart at this point. It looks like a mess now. <laughs> it will be this it's cool. It's all part of the design yeah, process. State-of-the-art uh, uh, World War II uh, <laughs> combat aircraft. Slam, oh. Slam is our, he's basically stickers, uh, stickers, Printing on figures, printing on kits. He's, he's taking, you know, you know, Lando previously did all, most of that stuff, and, and uh, Slam's done a very good job of jumping into that arena and, and picking up where Lando. He hasn't really left off, but because uh, we're still doing it, we just we're bigger, we have more more needs, and yeah, uh, that's what the, so. the pile of mini figs is there. The <laughs> test yeah, figs, yeah. Sticker pack dudes, Marines, yeah. Korean guy. Also doing up perfect calibers. Yep. Like, Calibers we've rolled out recently. So, so perfect calibers being what we're calling the weapons that we print. So we take an ordinary brick arms weapon and we print all the details. So if it has a, a, a wooden uh, stock on it or something, we'll actually print that or, or do all the different colors on uh, very, very fine printing that we can do. Um, it's, it's really time consuming. They have to line up every gun just right and then print it. And, you know, these things are tiny. They're, they're less than two inches long. So that's sort of the, the, a new area that we're getting into. Um, some of the more handmade brick arms are very expensive, so we're kind of an in-between. We're able to print all the details um, and actually get finer detail than anything else that's been previously achieved. Wood grain on the, on the rifle stocks, it's pretty nuts. So. Yeah, the accuracy, you can really up the ante with yep. that when you start doing that sort of printing. Yep. So uh, we have a kind of multi-facets of, uh, of uh, the Brick Mania design team. We, we do a lot of stuff for ourselves. This is actually for a, another local company. We're building a local restaurant. Um, for, for them, they, hopefully they're gonna display it in, in their restaurant. So a uh, local chain, Pizza Luce. Uh, of course, we, we did a little delivery cars with their <laughs> logo on it. 
Um, so sometimes these sorts of companies will just reach out and say, "Hey, can you do this?" We project we have for a us? family connection with okay. them. Okay. So this it's, this is we we very rarely do outside jobs, um, mostly because we don't have the time. Our, the Brick Mania product line is so uh, popular that we don't have time to do a lot of this. Uh, we do at exceptions. We've done a couple. We've done a couple breweries. We've done you know. So we're, we're doing things um, for people that we have a maybe we like them or sure. they, they they present us with something. Hey, we like to do that. So like the First Avenue thing. So this is kind of a once in a blue moon. These guys are working on building up this restaurant um, so they can get it on display. So next phase will be to do all the figures, do all the, you know, the cool pizzas <laughs> that have to go out, inside. Yeah. yeah. Of course, here's Lando. He's always working on something up to no good. Another person who, you know, never leaves his desk, always hard at work. Oh, yeah. <laughs> He's always usually in front of the camera. <laughs> camera hog. <Exactly. laughs> now that we have these 3D printers, actually, we're making our own, the, the, the pack that goes on the back, we're printing that. We're going to try to do printing our own helmet. Um, you know, 3D printing has its limitations, uh, but we're, we're certain that we can, you know, we can come up with something that's still within the Lego es aesthetic, but uh, would be closer to what they actually had in the 1960s when they, they, they sent, the, sent the astronauts to the moon. You're seeing the secrets. This is how it's done. <laughs> and of course, John. Of course, of course, John. This is awkward. Yes. <laughs> you have those that post three three Russian tanks versus one German unarmed German staff car. They're running. <laughs> Rightly so. <laughs> and then back towards my office, we have Julie, who is our chief financial officer, Hello. keeping track of the money. Making, right. making sure we spend it. So. <laughs> <laughs> we actually we spend it as fast as we make it. That's that's pretty much the motto around here. Sometimes yeah, we spend it keep fast. Things going. We spend it faster than we make it. <laughs> and for those who view, you know, uh, older viewers of the Brickmania TV episodes, you may recognize this as the old set. This is actually my office. So Brickmania has quite the accumulated quite the reference library. In fact, this in a couple like a month or two, this will cease to be my office and just be dedicated 100% to the Brickmania's off reference library. So, we have boxes on full, you know, boxes full of books all around, video stuff. Uh, it all needs to come out here and we we will actually have a expanded library so when we build models we can actually have the right historical references. Right, the, that's fantastic resources. You need to open up like an archival research. It, it kind of is already. People keep yeah. donating like here's some more books and like oh, this is great, but we have to have the place to put it. Right. So, so, we will be building a proper library and get it all organized. That's the the other, the other piece of that. So, anything else you guys want to see while you're here? You're, you're looking, you're looking at the sorting process right now. <laughs> so, we do recycle everything. This, this sort of end of the room has become the de facto sorting station. So, um, we recycle all of our old dioramas. We took, we did that uh, museum show last fall at Evansville, and at the end of that show, we, we very. Um, publicly destroyed a whole bunch of models. So <laughs> there, there's another video out there on the internet of us destroying our, our displays and this is, this is the end result. We have to sort all of it out so we can recycle it. So we have a lot of big projects coming up like this aircraft carrier that'll be next. So, um. so you have to cycle through like so many pieces for all the kits you guys make I know and you mentioned in past videos about how hard it is to get like large quantities of certain colors. Right. Have you ever considered using non-Lego pieces just to be able to put out more kits, or is that something you always want to stick to? Well, I mean, we do our own track links. Yeah. That, that was one thing that we were running into an issue with Lego not putting out enough chain links for us to, to be able to use. So we did our own, and our, uh, you know, ours are more realistic, more historically accurate. Um, at this point, we're still just using Lego. Um, things that Lego doesn't make, we'll use other third-party stuff. Right. Uh, and if we think we can make it better or more unique, unique, we'll do our own, either 3D printed or work with people like Will Chapman who can injection mold. Um, and we're, we're slowly working our way into building our own stuff. Would not be opposed to using another system if we can get consist quality, consistency, uh, decent price. Um, I mean, it's out there. It's, it's coming. I think that, uh, you know, we're not going to switch to Kobe or, or Mega Blocks or anything anytime soon. Sure. Uh, but at, at the rate things are going, more and more pieces are going to be custom. Mm -hmm. Uh, we want to get our own wheel system. You know, we did our own tracks, and next we want to do wheels. We want to do tank barrels. Want to do, you know, it, the list goes on and on. And pretty soon, it's going to be hard to define where Lego stops and where our stuff uh, picks up. So, uh, I mean, at some point, a completely revamped Lego system. You know, 
I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't want to speculate. It's not really where we're going, but yeah, it, yeah. It, it's definitely conceivable. In the future. I just know what that it seems like as you guys continue to scale up here, I'm sure it's harder and harder to find. Yeah, and what you're looking at, these are all used pieces. This is stuff that's either been in dioramas or we, we busted up sets. And typically this stuff will never make it into our kits. The kits are 100% new pieces. Uh, so you're, you're looking at everything you see on the table here, it's from something we've taken apart. Um, this will never make it into it. Nothing in this room will ever make it into a kit. We have a completely separate production operation, which is located in the same building, but we keep out all the bricks separate. So we want to make sure that people know that when they're buying from us, they're not getting something to use. Right, yeah, you want high quality pieces for sure. So, yep. <laughs> Well, that's, that's great. So it's great to see behind the scenes here. Let's yep. see, what, see what else is in the, the headquarters. Yeah. Well, we can walk. Let's walk okay, through the printer room. Let's yeah. go this way. Follow me. So as I said, we're, the whole operation is one room. This is our Christmas stash. <laughs> so when we go to shows, just, just an inside thing, we go to, when we go to events and if the Brickmania team wins something, like so a Brickmania employee wins a prize, a raffle prize, um, or we get something for whatever, um, we actually have a pile that is right you're looking at it right now that at the end of the year when we have our holiday party all the employees get a chance to win this stuff so we have oh, a drawing that's so great. so the people that go on the road don't end up getting all the right. <laughs> <laughs> so so we save it we're, we're very good about taking care of everybody here mm -hmm. so in this room this is our print operation one of one of four actual separate print operations that we do so one thing that we're very proud of at brick mania is that we do all of our own packaging um, Everything that, everything that would be printed is basically done in-house. We used to have to pay some people, other people to do what we do now. Of course, when you pay them, it's going to cost a lot more money, and you can never, uh, once you commit to something, you can't make changes. Having our own in-house printing operation means if we find a little mistake, we can correct it before the public sees it. So, um, we can also prototype an object, go from like computer screen to finished object. Like This is a sticker sheet right here. This sticker sheet from our um, Great War Bricks book. And we can not only print it, but we can actually die cut it. These are actually cut out. We can pull the sheet out here. I can get my fingers in it. Oh, it's stuck down. So, oh, there you go. So there is a sheet of stickers, and they are actually all cut out off the sheet. So from printer to die cutting all in one, in one room. Uh, we can do it in-house. We can do stickers. We can do books. That noise you hear in the background, <laughs> that is... Uh, spiral bound pages being punched out of our book as it comes out of the printer. And so, so you literally just do this all right here at the headquarters? Yeah, so this, this room, like 40 hours a week, we have the print shop open and running. Okay. So come on through the, the, the high quality plastic wall, <laughs> past the photo studio, which of course is off, off. Most of our photo, our packaging now is done digitally. So we've, we actually uh, do very little photography anymore, but we still do have photo studio for those, you know, the times that we need it and, and think it would be better. Uh, doing everything digitally is cool, but it also is very time consuming. So, More printing stuff through the marketing slash 3D animation room. I see uh, camera guys over here. <laughs> camera guys revealed. The big reveal Brick Mania camera guy. <laughs> Secrets out. <laughs> The two camera guys meet. <laughs> this section doesn't like the light very much. In this <laughs> well, if you're staring at a computer screen all day and you don't want glare, don't be in a room with light yeah. windows. This is the only room that we have that doesn't have windows in it. So it, it does get some ambient light through the offices, but very little of our, this is an old factory, so very little of it is actually um, block walls. Back in the old days, you worked when the sun was up. So saved a lot of money that way. You come through this way. Of course, this used to be the Brickmania Toy Works. This used to be the place that we'd open up for the public, have the trains were in here, uh, had World War Brick in here. Uh, Brickmania's expanded so much that we actually do production in here now. So we can uh, take a quick walk through the production room. Um, these, of course, are all of our new bricks. Um, production, basically, the, the cycle goes. They get a list from the design team. We'll take that list, uh, put it into batches of 50, because we do everything in, usually in batches of 50 at a time. We'll pull all the parts off of our wall that we have. Um, then step two will be, we actually have to buy the pieces that are missing. While we're waiting for the parts that are missing to come in, just keep prepping everything ready to go. Uh, next phase would be, um, once everything's counted out for a batch of 50, they will get taken to a, basically a, a parting station, or we call it kidding station. 
um, where they're hand counted. So 50, 50 sets at a time, hand counted. Every piece is, is, is handled, you know, this is not, we, we're not a machine run operation. We do stuff in two smaller batches. By the time we get the machine set up, the, the batch will right, be done. Right, <laughs> so it's, it's still worth it to use kind of the human side of it. Yeah, even for making like 10 batches or something, still doing each one of them by hand. Um, we've had orders for like 2,000 of, of an item at a time. Um, and we just have to make 2,000 batches of 50 at a time, or you know, 2,000, yeah, I mean, that's it, 40 batches. Mm -hmm. So parts, 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 kidding here. And then at the end of the line, this is quality control, which I believe is on lunch break right now. <laughs> QC and, pa and packaging, are there, they're, this is where they would be operating, but basically everything gets weighed, um, inspected. So like if we do a new kit, we will actually uh, pull a sample out, weigh it, make sure it's actually, we'll count everything by hand, make sure it's all there. Um, we'll actually build one to make sure all the parts are correct because it's happened that similar parts, an up bracket weighs it's remarkably the same as a down bracket, um, and they look the same. And left wing weighs exactly the same as the right wing. So we do inspect, we'll do a physical build of, of one kit off, the first, usually the first kit off the assembly line will get hand, you know, rebuilt to our standards, make sure it's done right. Also gets at the same time, we get to check our instructions to make sure the instructions are right. So all those instruction sets, the packaging, this, is, this was printed here in house. Um, everything we do is done in house. We're, looks like we're doing T3485. So this is actually next week's new release. Nice. Packaging always looks fantastic, yeah. Yeah, and then from there, they get sealed up. Um, looks like they're doing some weighing out today. So this is part of the weighing process. We have these, this incredibly accurate scale, oh, pardon me, um, that they can test everything like to the thousandth of, a, of an ounce or a milligram, depending on how we're doing it. Um, so they're weighing stuff out. Normally, they'd be shrink wrapping at the station. Um, and then... Shrink wrapping out, out over to customer service where actually your orders were, are being filled. So here we can sneak through here. So usually there's a ladder right here, but it's, it's gone. So we'll, uh, we'll take advantage of it. Back stock, um, which is remarkably small. <laughs> there's not, we don't have a whole, we're doing stuff 50 at a time. We don't necessarily have a whole lot of back inventory. So your approach is more, you know, make the, the run of 50 kits sell out and try not to have too much or we'll some we'll try we'll try to keep stuff in stock, but um, with you know we have like 30, 40 products in production at any given time. We can't keep them all in stock at yeah. the same time. So we if we do a hundred of one kit, that means that's fifty of another kit we can't do. So we try to keep stuff in stock. It just rotates in as fast as fast as we can. We try to like do a new batch, so it's it's relatively short period of time between one batch to the next. So it's not off the inventory very long, but. During busy times, we just get wiped out. There's just there's there's no depth of inventory once, especially during a busy time like the holidays. Once it's gone, it's going to take us five to six weeks or more to do restocks. Um, of course, we are the number one world's number one seller of brick arms. So we have just about every brick arms items um, that are available. We do a lot of custom printing on the brick arms that you can only get through Brickmania. Um, we do we we do a lot of like uh, custom printed Lego tiles. Lego heads. Um, we, we, we dabble a little bit with Minifig Cat, which is, of course, is another customizer out of, um, I think, I believe they're from Taiwan. Um, we represent them in North America. We don't have their full product line. It's just, it's too much. Um, eventually, we'll expand into the whole, the whole line, but uh, we, we only have so much, so much you know, room for inventory and so much time to, to get it up on our site. Uh, so Brick Arms is our number one supplier, for sure, and that's, we are the number one seller. So. We have all the full line of Brick Arms packs. There's a lot of packs that are actually just Brick, brick Mania only because we work with Brick Arms to get certain select items that we would like to have. And, uh, we'll At make this the point, crates. you've had such a close relationship with them that you're... Yeah, and then certain things, like he doesn't print on anything anymore. He used to have his own printing operation. He's gotten out of it since we started doing it. So we make the printed crates. We do a lot of that stuff in-house. We'd be the only place you can get those parts. You know, we're the only place you, people you can get those products from because we're the only people capable of making them. Yeah. So, so, as things come out this way, basically filling orders, and then out the door, we'll have a we'll have a visit from DHL, the UPS, and the post office, uh, all at some point this <laughs> afternoon, and stuff will go from here out the door. And we try very, very much to get if you make an order, get it out the same day, uh, at least within a 24 hours of the next pickup cycle. So, if you made an order Saturday morning, 
unfortunately we don't have any pickups on the weekends, they probably wouldn't make it out until Monday afternoon, maybe even Tuesday if we're super busy. Uh, but we try to get out the next business day. So every day, filling orders doesn't change. <laughs> there you go. They're hard Camera guy, right yeah, now. they are. We're interrupting the workflow. So, so they're, we're, we're making room. We have a whole bunch of new mini kits coming out. So we're making room here so we can have mini kits, a, a section for them. So these drawers basically just contain all of our kits. Uh, every one. Cut. As you can see, we're having a hard time keeping stuff in stock. And that's normal around here. We just, as much as we try, we're making like six to seven batches of kits every week, and it's just not enough. So there's always some stuff out of stock. Um, we just don't You're have just too people. popular. I'm not complaining, yeah. not complaining at all. So. <laughs> Mini kits in particular, we have a hard time keeping in stock. So. It's the one thing that we always have to be wary of. Some of the kits are really popular. We can't make, we can't even make enough to fill all the demand because there's just not enough parts in the world. So, mm -hmm. you know, we're at the mercy of, what's available out there in the, the brickosphere, you know, like whatever's on BrickLink. If there's only 500 of a certain part, we can't use more than it's available. So, um, you know, and, it's, and we're not the only people in the world buying too. We may be the number one buyers on BrickLink, but we're not the only ones. So uh, we are competing with, you know, other people who built their hobbies, their, their, their passions too. So uh, we don't have a monopoly on it. We have to wait until uh, parts become available. So a kit might come, go out of stock within six months and we'll never be able to get it back again. So it's just the nature of the beast. Of course, we do a lot of custom figures. It's probably the, Brick Mania is known number one for our custom sets, number two for the custom figures. I don't think anybody puts out nearly as many custom figures as we do. We're at, what, 400 almost? So we've done about 400, 500 sets and almost as many figures. Right, yeah, that's a, a lot of variations of minifigs. <laughs> yeah, and then each set comes with minifigs, so it's like, <laughs> You know, you add on top of the individual minifigs, I think we're up to 300 something here, and that doesn't include all the figures that don't have numbers that have gone into kits. So, uh, and those are also all printed here? Yeah, we print, we yeah. print everything in house. I said before, we have four, four printing operations. Um, we do the paper print, which is the room we walk through, vinyl printing, so we can do all of our own banners, stickers, gigantic store wraps, stuff like that. Uh, you saw that sheet that we built the uh, USS O'Hare on, we printed that diagram with one of our giant printers. We can print on the figures and then we can print 3D print parts. So four different unique printing operations all under one roof. So we do have a very technical component to Brickmania that you know, you're not gonna see in this video. Yeah, I know, it's, it's a massive operation. So you've got all these people involved. Do you plan to continue growing from here? Or where, where do you see it kind of going in the future? I don't think there's any end in sight. We, we have some sort of goals like we wanna do this next process, we don't know how to do it yet. And mm -hmm. we want to learn. We want to learn pad printing. We want to learn injection molding. There's just things that we know that we're going to be getting into, and, and it's just a matter of time. Um, one of the things that we always have to consider is we have to balance between demand for our current product versus where we'd like to be in the future. And as much as we want to just keep hiring people, we can only hire, we can only be as big as we can afford to be. So we want to, we want to get in these new areas. We have to balance, juggle our time, juggle our, our, our uh, commitments you know especially when we're turning away work all the time so it's tough <laughs> yeah. Sorry. another question that comes up frequently that i think it's this is probably a good time to address it you know looking at this whole operation here is the the expense of brick mania kits so talk a little bit about that and kind of if you can maybe break that down for people who wonder you know why are your kits maybe more expensive than a normal sure. lego kit or something like that well, when you the, see what's going on the two main components of that would be uh the cost of the parts and the small runs, you know, that we do. It's sort of the nature of the beast that we, we can't buy, we can't make our, our bricks. We have to buy them on the open market. And you can go, oh, look at BrickLink. I can buy all these parts super cheap. Well, for one, you probably can't buy them as cheap as you, you think you can. Um, and there's a big difference between used bricks and new bricks. So every brick that we put in a set has to be new quality. Um, either we go to the store, buy the Lego set, break it up ourselves, or somebody at BrickLink that we would trust to, to supply us with uh, new, new quality bricks. We have to buy them, and we're buying them at market rate. We don't get a discount. Lego won't sell to us, right. uh, not officially. So we have to go through third parties, and there's not very many wholesalers of Lego. So it's really like people are buying them on a retail. We buy them from them on a retail. So we're already paying one markup, and we're paying market rate. So that's our biggest expense. Biggest single expense is what goes in the box. 
Um, the other part of that is that everything being limited edition, if we're only making 100 copies of something, we have to pay the designers, we have to pay the development time. And you know, a set, an average set probably has 50 to 100 development hours in it. Um, bigger sets could have more, could have up, up to 500 development hours. And think of like, multiply that, just even if, if we were to pay somebody as low as $10 an hour, um, which we can't, because not in this, this we can't, you can't pay somebody that much for uh, design work. Um, it's going to be very expensive, and we have to recoup all that cost, otherwise we can't put out the next set. And I don't think a lot of people understand when you're doing small runs, it's like, it's like, it's like an art form. And we're developing all these processes by hand. Everyone takes time to learn, and you know, learning how to do the printing, learning how to make the instructions, learning how to do all that stuff. It's just, you know, it's, it's on a colossal scale. And when you're only making 200 copies of a set, that development time has to be compressed into there. So if we can make 10,000, 100,000 copies of something, obviously we wouldn't have to charge as much. But on the other hand, it would, it's a kind of a scale we can never achieve. Right, with just the pieces available to you and what you can yeah. do. Yeah, so it's still like, it's kind of like we're an artisanal, um, I don't know, like we look at ourselves as kind of artists and we're making stuff on a mass production basis, but you're, you're talking like mass production being on the high end like 50, there are 500 copies, <laughs> minimum 50, high end 500. And there are certain sets we've only made 20 of because because they're so big and so um, we know there's just not the market out there to support it. So or we can't even get the parts to make more than that many. Yeah. So. No, that makes a lot of sense, especially as you take us around and walk around here and see so much that's going on. Yep. Obviously, all of that is involved in making these kits and everything. Right. So on, on the the end, then when you're giving that to the consumer, that kind of is why why certain kits are priced the way they are. They are, and also we're a, we're we're not just putting one kit out at a time. We have 52 kits a year minimum. And so we can't, we have, it's not just one guy working on it and then handing it off to the next person. It's one person next to another person, next to another person working on four distinct products at the same time. And the scale that we're talking about is, it's pretty expensive. Um, we can't just have one guy in there doing it. We have to have a whole bunch of people. And then um, I think we look at it like if one person's designing a kit, by the time that gets to the consumer's hands, 20 other people have touched it, uh, minimally. Um, just, you know, all the marketing that goes into it, the packaging, uh, getting it to the store, running the store, you know, getting it to the post office, all those things. It, 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 there's, there's people involved in it. So. Yeah, well, that makes a lot of sense then. But yeah. thank you so much for showing us around the whole yeah. behind the scenes and everything here. So for all Brickmania fans out there, I'm sure uh, you enjoyed seeing, you know, kind of what goes into creating your orders. If you buy from Brickmania, this operation right here is how it all gets prepared and shipped to you. Yeah, this is the place. Yeah, awesome stuff though. Thank you so much for watching and we'll definitely have more in-depth videos that we'll link in the description to some of the exhibits and some more of the stuff we've covered here at Brickmania. So make sure to look for those.